and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and this is Trading Places Live. It's Thursday, February 10th, 2022, and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for just a bit later this morning. Um, currently, we've got futures um, a little mixed. Uh, the Dow Jones futures getting a lift from uh, Walt Disney's earnings. Uh, they are up, uh, the Dow Jones futures up 64. Um, S&P 500 futures relatively flat, just down a couple of points. NASDAQ futures down a little bit more, down about 20. Um, but this can change. Uh, we've got a little bit more time this morning. And of course, a huge, huge, huge CPI report coming out for the month of January. So we got a lot going on this morning, but uh, at least for now, futures kind of hanging in there relatively flat. Uh, let's go through uh, today's agenda. Uh, I'm going to start off with the daily market recap for Wednesday, then we'll get into talking technically. Chart breakouts, go through some 52-week highs, um, earnings spotlight, and we'll wrap up with the three you must see. <clears throat> but before we get into any of that, let me take you over to Earnings Beats. Uh, you can go over to earningsbeats.com and scroll down. We'd love to have you as an EB Digest subscriber. It is a completely free newsletter. Uh, no credit card required. You can unsubscribe at any time. All it takes is the name, email address. Uh, we do uh, publish newsletter three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, normally out around 8.30 in the morning. So we try to get it out about an hour before the market opens. And uh, it just features, you know, things that we focus on at earnings beat. So obviously earnings reports, uh, gap ups and gap downs that could result from those earnings, candlesticks, relative strength, all of those types of things. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more about us, maybe, uh, um, you know, pick up a few things for your own trading uh, strategies, um, it would be great to uh, have you as a, an Earnings Beats Digest subscriber. Also, we always reach out to this community. All of our EV Digest subscribers, we reach out to when we have free events. Uh, so you definitely want to want to you know be a part of that uh, so you don't miss out there. Um, speaking of events, this one's not a free one. Well, actually, it can be a free one because uh, if you're a trial member uh, at Earnings Beats, um, that's paid member, but you actually get a 30-day trial for free. Uh, we have a huge event coming up on Saturday. So you click here for the educational series events. And when you go down, you will see a couple of different uh, events. Um, the second one being the anatomy of a cyclical bear market. So uh, we'd love to have you in here for this one. If you, you know, I believe we are in a cyclical bear market. I think we're going to go eventually to another low. And I would not be surprised to see the market down 20, 25% at some point in 2022 before I think we stage a big rally later in 2022. Probably, well, maybe, maybe not getting back to all-time highs. I suspect we'll probably wait and see those in 2023. That's what I'm looking for. If uh, you tend to think maybe that we are going to have more weakness, I would really highly recommend that you come in for this weekend's event. Um, this is going to be where I highlight what a cyclical bear market looks like. We're gonna go back into history and we're gonna pull out those cyclical bear markets and uh, really scrutinize them, take a look and just give us a little bit better clue of the patience that we're gonna to need to have and the false signals sometimes that you get in a bear market where you think everything's okay. And then all of a sudden that carpet gets pulled out from under you. Anyhow, um, that is gonna be a great event on Saturday. I'm really looking forward to it. So down at the bottom here, uh, you can actually sign up for um, your 30-day trial so you can come to the event. Zero dollars for 30 days. And we'll reach out to you before your 30 days are up to let you know that you are expiring. So, uh, you know, you don't need to stay unless that's your intent to remain as a member. But we'd love to have you for the Saturday event. <clears throat> All right, let's move on to the daily market recap. A uh, very solid day on a Wednesday. I'm somewhat surprised. I mean, I'm not surprised, but I am surprised. I do believe that uh, we are in a secular bull market, so I'm not surprised anytime the market goes higher. But with the issues out there um, and with a big uh, CPI report coming out this morning, I would not have been buying into the close yesterday, but obviously there were plenty of others who were. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average up 305 points. That's up nearly nine, or excuse me, 0.9% on the day. The S&P 500, and by the way, that was one of the weakest gains, uh, that 0.9% on the Dow. S&P up 1.45%, up 65 points. 
right back up near the high where we were at the start of the month um, and right underneath that 50-day moving average. The Dow's gotten through the 50, by the way, so it was the first one to, to do that. The NASDAQ rose more than 2%, almost 300 points on Wednesday, back up to that 14.5 level, which is right where we were to start February. Can we continue it? Well, we're going to find out with the CPI report on deck. We'll see how the market reacts to that. Mid caps up 1.8%, uh, small caps up a little more than 1%, but across the board, uh, definitely great action. All 11 sectors were higher as well. Communication services was the best of the bunch, gaining 2.8%. Real estate, 2.4%. Technology, 2.2%. Like to see technology doing well there. And then uh, materials, a little over 2%. Industrials, 1.4%. So across the board, very strong action. And I got to point out one thing looking at the AD lines. Most of them don't look great, but I will point out the S&P 500 has gone to an all-time high on its AD line. Um, so read that, read that into that, what you may. Um, but I, I find it to be a bullish signal. Um, it certainly never hurts with the market going down, actually setting new highs on the AD line. Kind of gives you the sense that while the market sells off, uh, there is accumulation taking place. So that's a, I think it's a bullish thing for down the road. But we still have price weakness, and that's what we have to deal with in the near term. All right, 10-year Treasury yield. A uh, couple of economic reports out this morning. Uh, initial jobless claims expected to come in at 230,000. Last week was 238,000. And as I mentioned, January CPI uh, will be out at uh, 8.30 this morning. By the time you get this um, recording, it will already have been released and you'll be seeing the market reaction. I'm interested in two market reactions, obviously the initial market reaction, but ultimately, just total market reaction over the next several months as inflation, the numbers continue to move higher because they are going to move higher. Um, <clears throat> let's uh, take a look quickly at the 10-year Treasury yield. You can see it's been trending higher. Recently, we broke out above that 1.87 level. We hit 1.97 on Tuesday, and that's big because that was the pre-pandemic high that we saw back in 2019. So we have gone up, we've tested that, now we've pulled back. I would also be looking for the reaction in the 10-year Treasury yield with the CPI report coming out this morning. If it's hotter than expected, I think we could see the 10-year Treasury yield break out above that 1.97%. And if we start getting a two-handle on the 10-year Treasury yield, that could spook investors as well. So that's something to watch for to the upside. Um, but to the downside, if CPI comes in as expected, which is at uh, one half of 1%, or if it comes in a little bit better than expected, we could see the 10-year Treasury yield pull back. And that could spur a short-term rally in the market where we take out you know, moving averages, take out recent highs. Do I think that would end um, all of my bearishness? No, I don't. I think that we've got issues that we're going to have to deal with. With inflation over the next few months, I think we've got sentiment issues to deal with. So no, I still think we, we have some issues. But in the short term, that would kind of change things from being in a downtrending S&P 500 to maybe more sideways consolidation. So maybe our look uh, there has to change a bit. But we'll see. Let's see how everything uh, plays out. Um, wanted to mention, uh, we'll get into talking technically here. Wanted to mention the QQQ, which is the ETF that tracks the NASDAQ 100. Since the beginning of January, I was just doing a little bit of, I don't know, um, playing around on a spreadsheet yesterday um, <clears throat> because it really helped me back at the um, beginning of the pandemic when the market was going down a lot, but I could tell that there were a lot of gap downs and not much selling during the day. Most of the, I think from what I remember from February 19th to like March 23rd, I want to say like 80% of the drop was at the opening bell, at the gap, you know, those gaps. And only 20% was actual selling during the day. Um, now, that's kind of what I recall. I'd have to go back and look at that. But anyway, that was telling me that the market was being somewhat manipulated to the downside. There was not, that, not nearly as much distribution and selling as you might think. So I went back and I looked at January 2022 to see what the QQQ has been doing, and you can see a lot of red-filled candles. That's a good indication of distribution. 
That's actual selling during the day from the open to the close. You can see some big moves to the downside. So I went back and I did a calculation. I kind of broke it down. Let me, let me annotate this. Maybe that'll help Visu so you can visualize what I did. So what I did is I went right down here. So I went to um, January 21st. So from January 3rd close through the January 21st close. So basically from here all the way down to here. And what I found was that 78% of this move was actual intraday selling. 21% of the move um, was gap downs. So yeah, some of it resulted in gap downs, but the overwhelming majority of this was actual selling. Now, finally, when the market makers came off of vacation, I always call you know market makers going on vacation when volatility spikes and we start seeing this kind of action to the downside, market makers are not providing liquidity. If they were, we wouldn't be seeing that kind of downside so fast. But they go on vacation and if, I actually think they join in on the short side, uh, partying with the rest of the shorts. So you get all this uh, supply and almost no demand. And that's why you get these massive drops. Well, when you finally get capitulation, that is a sign that market makers are back. You know, they're back off of vacation. They're back to work again. And so they're buying big volume. Notice that sets the bottom. The VIX topped at 39. And now we're in this recovery phase. So I think these two days were kind of days where we were seeing some gap downs. Uh, here was a big gap down, sell off recovery, another big gap down, sell off, little bit of recovery. So I'm kind of using these two days as um, kind of standalone, like the market make, welcome back market makers. Then we went into the recovery mode. Now we had a couple of big red days to start, but I I went through from this date, which was the close on January 25th, through um, the close on the 8th. So I didn't add yesterday's in yet. Um, so I went right to here. And I looked to see, okay, so what's happened here between gaps and recoveries? And what I found is that we gapped up a total of 11 and a half bucks in this period. And we only gained intraday $2.42. So 83% of this move to the upside was gap ups. 17% was actual buying intraday. So that to me tells me that we've, you know, maybe got a little bit of manipulation going on to the upside, which makes me also question how long it's going to last. Um, you know, the QQQ, you've got the, the uh, recent high up here at about 370. We definitely could get there. I mean, that would just be a test of that level. Here's where we broke down from. I mean, we had this double bottom. We went down here to about 375 back up. And then the big selling kicked in at 375. So maybe that's the level on the QQQ. And notice as we go through, I'll be honest, I keep raising where we could potentially be going. And that's a problem in a market like this because, if you don't know if you're going to go up $10 or down $10 uh, on the QQQ, it's really hard to trade. And that's been my point since the very beginning of the year. I think sitting it out is much easier. Trying to guess which way this market is going to go is very difficult. I find it much easier when I'm looking at the market to say, you know what, I think we're going lower. But trying to time the move, very difficult. I would simply say this, be careful when we're trading above the 20-day and maybe be a little bit more aggressive when we're trading below the 20 day. Um, above the 20 day, we could trend back higher for a period of time, who knows? Below the 20 day, then I think that's an indication that, hey, we could see more weakness to the downside. So those are just a couple of things I'd be looking for there with the QQQ. I just found it interesting, so I wanted to share that with you. <clears throat> the consumer price index, I pulled this up. And this is just the monthly, uh, it's actually a moving average, just kind of smoothing out the, the uh, uh, consumer price index, the core consumer price index. Down here is the rate of change. So it's a monthly chart, the rate of change is 12 periods. So that's a 12 month rate of change. This gives you your annual rate of inflation and you can see how much we have picked up. Below this, I've got 
two other um, charts, one being the IWF versus the IWD, which is really large cap um, versus small cap growth. And you can see large cap doing much better. And even, you know, large cap did go down during the initial stages of this push in inflation. So we saw this ratio drop a little bit, but large cap has actually come back again. And so large cap doing much better. All right, I said large cap versus small cap, I'm sorry. This is large cap growth versus large cap value. Getting myself confused. Down here is more talking about uh, small cap growth. So this is large cap growth versus large cap value. And so growth was doing well. Uh, for a period of time, but then inflation kicked in, large cap growth went down. And now with inflation going up, large cap growth has actually been doing pretty well versus large cap value. And I'm going to tell you, it's probably, well, it's not probably, it's because the large cap growth that are in the IWF, we're talking about Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, um, you know, these companies that have tremendous pricing um, Ability. I mean, they can they can raise prices and still, uh, I think, continue to operate as normal. Other companies, smaller companies, don't have that ability. They're still trying to fight competition. Um, you know, it's much more difficult. It goes right into their margins because they can't raise prices, and so and then you know just eats away at future earnings. So if it does nothing else, it lowers valuations just because of that and the fact that normally with higher inflation you get higher interest rates which also eat into the value of those future earnings and future cash flows. So my point here is I just, as we go through this inflation, you can see that some of the large cap growth stocks have continued to, to keep up with their large uh, cap value counterparts. Um, down here at the bottom, you can see small cap growth versus small cap value. And you can see that this inflation has really uh, had an impact on the small cap growth. And so that's been, you know, one of the, like a, almost a divergence in the market. Large cap growth has been able to hold up, small cap growth, not so much. Um, and that's what we continue to deal with as the inflation numbers come out. So something to be aware of as we get the inflation, how do these different groups react? That's some of what I'll be looking at in addition to just how's the S&P 500 doing? How are these various groups that normally like small cap growth, that normally don't like inflationary periods, how are they doing? That's gonna be uh, something to kind of keep an eye on, I think. Not just today after the CPI report comes out, but really over the next few months, because this inflation number is going to go higher. It will go higher. And if I go up here to these, let's see if we can change this. I'm gonna change this to candlestick. And we'll just get rid of the moving or the overlays. All right, now I don't know if you can see this very well. Actually, let's shorten this down so you can see it better. We'll just look at the last five years. And what I want you to see, this is the, you can see the rise in the core CPI and how quickly it's been moving up. Well, we're, um, the estimate is to rise another five tenths of 1% today. If we do that, we're going to see another jump here. But if you go back and look at the January 2021 uh, core CPI, see how it was flat? We're going to get rid of that reading and we're going to tack on a half percent rise. So your annual rate of change is probably going to go up to about 6% today. And then more bad news because February and March saw increases, but not big increases. So as we have more inflation news coming out these next today and in the next two months, we're going to be replacing some very small increases in CPI and replacing them with, with most likely larger numbers. So this rate of change, this annual rate of inflation is likely to go up not just today, but over the next two months as well. We could see maybe as high as 7%. And that's what the market's going to have to deal with. Those are the headlines that we're going to have to deal with for the next couple of months. Is the market just going to ignore it and go higher? Maybe. I don't think so, but maybe. I think we're going to probably instead reset that sentiment like I've been talking about, see a move up uh, in inflation, a move down in the market, a move up in the equity-only put-call ratio. And then I think we're going to launch later this year to the upside in stocks. But 
I think we got some things to deal with first. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I, on the one hand, I kind of hope I'm wrong. We go back up, but the problem with that is we're going to move back out of the channel. Uh, we're going to have, still have issues with sentiment. And so it's going to be harder to trust that move. And if, uh, if we do that, that's going to really make for a, a difficult market, I think. So I'd actually just like to see the sentiment reset. Let's take the pain and then let's move on into the second half of the year and into 2023 with a much easier market to trade, in my opinion. But we'll see how it all plays out. All right. Uh, next up, I just wanted to show you, if you go over here at the home page, this is the... Um, this is chart breakouts, by the way. I want to show you how I did this. You just go over here to um, this your scans area and hit predefined scans. And then this new 52 week highs. I just took this um, and clicked on it, brought up these uh, chart or all these stocks, um, and I saved it into a chart list. And then I got rid of these ETNs and ETFs. And what I did is then I came up with this chart list. And then in columns, I added, I made sure I had sector, industry, and scooter. And so now I can sort this if I want by anything. I can see, okay, where were the breakouts? Well, here were eight breakouts in communication services, five in discretionary. Here's energy. You can see a bunch of energy stocks, a bunch of financial stocks, a lot of financial stocks, healthcare, a bunch of industrials, handful of materials of real estate, staples, two technology. Only two technology stocks on the New York Stock Exchange set 52-week highs yesterday. So we weren't getting a whole lot of strength from that area, which is just kind of interesting. Then you can look at and sort it by industries if you want. Banks obviously seeing some breakouts with yields higher. You can sort it by scooters. But then you can pull up the charts and go through. I think that's uh, – I just wanted to point that out, that that is a um, one way to take a look at chart breakouts by just going to the predefined scans and dropping it into a chart list and then doing your work, all your work from there. Um, so just wanted to show you how you can do that using stock charts platform. All right, earnings spotlight. Um, first of all, Disney. I'm just going to read through some of these uh, companies as I pull the charts up and uh, just go through the reactions as of, you know, maybe about 7 or 7.30 this morning. Disney was up 7 and a quarter percent this morning after they reported their earnings. Uber. Uh, up 5.6% this morning. Now, of course, it's not showing on your charts because it's just pre-market action, but Uber is set to open more than 5% higher. O'Reilly uh, set to open about 4% higher. Here was a big one. Twilio, T-W-L-O, this is in the software area. Twilio set to open up 20% today. Big, big move there. I think it was up over 240. So going to be up in this area. Um, Seattle Genetics, or actually, I think they switched their name to CGen. Yeah, CGen. S-G-E-N, they are set to open 16% lower this morning. Check out their relative strength versus um, biotechs. It's been very weak. So we shouldn't be surprised when we see some negative action like this. All right, uh, L-U-M-N, this is Luminin or Lumen Technology. Uh, technologies, Lumen Technologies, down 11% this morning with its earnings after the bell yesterday. Uh, another software company, this is uh, C-Day, Ceridian, HCM Holding. Um, they are set to open down 8.5% this morning. Interesting, their AD line's up near 52-week high. So you got to wonder maybe if there's some accumulation that's been taking place during this weakness. Mattel set to open up 12% this morning. That's going to be a big breakout on Mattel. That'll be worth uh, paying attention to. Sono up 6% pre-market action. Uh, let's take a look at three more real quick. I'm going to give you iRobot, IRBT. Set to open down 15% this morning with its earnings. Been down trending for a long time. Look at the relative weakness versus its peers. Been going on for a long time. We shouldn't be surprised. Wall Street ignoring the company, we should too. Datadog, which is actually a company I really like. Um, Datadog up 13, almost 14% this morning. I like the fact that the AD line, even though prices are going down, the AD line continuing to hold. So I think there's some accumulation taking place here. I also like the fact that this stock remains fairly close to its 52-week high versus software companies. 
Volume trends very strong on this latest pushback to the upside. Uh, and now we know why we're getting a nice uh, pop on Datadog this morning, 14%. We're not going to be too far from a 52-week high, and there aren't too many software stocks saying that right now. The last one I'll go over here is uh, CyberArk, C-Y-B-R. They reported this morning stock up almost 14% in pre-market. Now, this one is down near 52-week low. Recently, I would be careful on this gap up. Uh, be interesting to see maybe if it sells off after it gaps up or whether it can continue to push to the upside. My guess would be maybe a move up and then a sell off based on the way it's been trading on uh, a relative basis. And also the AD line, which had gone to about a five or six month low on this move to the downside. All right, uh, let's move on to the three you must see, and then we'll wrap this thing up. First, I'm going to start with uh, Nike. Uh, Nike has been downtrending. It is down close to this area of support. There was resistance between 140, 145. We gapped above it. We came down to 145. Here we're at 140. This is an area where I would expect to see Nike make a nice move back to the upside. Now, whether or not we do that, uh, well, well, we'll find out. Um, but this is a key support area for Nike. So I wanted to point that out. Uh, next up, MasterCard. MasterCard actually went up and tested 400. Notice the high back in April, 400. So after getting up and testing that level, we pulled back. We've held the 20 day though. And that also was a recent breakout over 375. So I think this 370, 375 area is, a, is an area I would watch to the downside. I think MasterCard goes higher from here and breaks out. But if it breaks below the 370 level, all bets are off and I would be back to the sidelines. FLT um, is another one that uh, recently made a breakout in the short term. So here was your pullback, came back up. Looks like maybe a Fibonacci retracement might have gotten all the way back to 61%. Kind of went down again. Looks like we were rolling over and then we got this big volume break to the upside. So I like Fleet Core here breaking out. We had a lot of support here that when we broke down, we were really struggling when we got back up close to 250. Yesterday, we closed over 250. So I think this one's got a chance to begin uh, recovering even you know, more strongly. So we'll see whether or not we can uh, continue that push to the upside on FLT. I'll give you a bonus one, AIZ, um, Assurant. Uh, and I'll quickly annotate this as well. But you can see right here, the tops coming in and probably maybe not a channel, but probably, yeah, there's a pretty good channel right there. Uh, so you can see the bottoms coming in testing, four bottoms tested this line, probably about five, four or five tops tested this line. Well, guess what? We just broke out above this channel. So the downtrend looks to me to be over. I think we are now trending higher, uh, but doesn't mean we won't pull back. Watch the top of gap support, which is around 162. I think that could be a really nice level on uh, Assurant. All right, that is it for me. I appreciate you tuning in. Remember, uh, for me, in just a little bit, we're going to be getting the uh, uh, Consumer Price Index report. But by the time you're listening to this, it's already going to be out. Market will be open. Pay attention not only to how the market does, but look at those um, under the surface signals that you get. Look at the, the growth stocks versus the value stocks. That's going to be a big one. Look to see how consumer discretionary does versus consumer staples. Those will be some other hints uh, that I'll be looking for as well. All right. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll be back with your next Trading Places Live on Monday morning at 9 a.m. over at earningsbeats.com. Don't forget the anatomy of a bear market, a cyclical bear market. We're going to do that event on Saturday. Love to see you there. Take care, everybody. Happy trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.